Hello everybody. Today I have a special treat. We're going to be talking to Josh, um, who has been in the Inkscape pro project for many, many years. And what we're actually going to be talking about is the CMYK color management that Inkscape has had for many years. Basically, this is the way in which we can use ICC profiles in Inkscape. And um, he will be enlightening us as to how Inkscape actually managed to get the, this func fun fun functionality. Uh, Josh, why don't you introduce yourself first? Hi, um, I'm Josh Chandler. I've been working with the Inkscape project for 20 years. Uh, it was just a few months after the project was forked from Sodi Pody that I uh, was on board just as a user initially. And from there, coming from the commercial software world uh, as a user and having it be something that was really difficult because if you had any uh, issues, you couldn't do anything about that and finding Inkscape and trying it out and just, you know, giving, running into problems and, you know, asking, hey, how do I do this? And having a very helpful community that was like, oh, hey, we could actually fix that. Yeah, what what, and, what, what, what uh, year was that? That was, what, 2004? 2004, so 20 years ago. Yeah, 20 years ago. Wow, yeah. okay. And, yeah, I think that like my first interactive like thing on the mailing list was like two months after the project was established. Excellent. So, yeah. So, so, so you've been with the pro project this entire time, and um, you actually know the history about uh, the color management. Um, so, could you tell us the sto story about how Inkscape got color management support? Uh, the original color management support was uh, actually implemented during. I'm not sure if it was the first Google Summer of Code, uh, but it was definitely one of the first couple that we had. Um, and it was John Cruz that was mentoring it, and it was Philippe Sanchez. Uh, but uh, it was something that was greatly desired by the community, and we had a really enthusiastic student and a, uh, a mentor within the project. Uh, he's not actively developing anymore, but he also, he used to have history of working in a print shop at one point. Yep. So he knew a lot about the, he was very well suited to be a mentor for it. Um, part of the issue that we had though, um, is a lot of great work was put into uh, putting the inner workings for how you could support the, uh, a color managed workflow. Yeah. But there was no way to get that out of the application that was useful to any normal user. And um, and so a lot of that has existed for, you know, easily, uh, it, definitely at least 15 years and has just been um, inaccessible really yeah. because our, uh, our PDF export um, just, the methods that we had for it just didn't know how to hook into that uh, appropriately. The, the so, uh, so what what did actually uh, what was done was that there was a way that you could do it to save SVGs with the uh, color managed uh, data that you could attach to it, and that could be opened in one application, which was Scribus, and um, that was. The only thing that knew how to recognize that additional uh, color management info within the SVGs. So was this, was this so, done at the same time uh, during the same Google Summer of Code project, or was this done no. afterwards? No, that the, the SVG part was uh, done after that. Okay. And if I recall correctly, uh, the color management work was actually uh, done over two separate summers. There was like one that was getting all of the all of the internal work done to make it ready for that, you know, phase two that took place uh, another year. Okay. Um, and then the basically what would have been a phase three just is not something that ever came to be just due to limitations of uh, the existing uh, libraries that we used for PDF export. Okay, so so what it sounds like, um, and correct me if I've got the snow story wrong here, is that we developed the color management support based upon the SVG 1.1 specification for including uh, color managed col colors in the SVG itself. We developed that over two Google Summer of Codes, 
and then when it came to developing it further we became stuck on the actual uh, PDF export because the mechanism that we're currently using to export PDFs strictly only supports uh, RGB and so we didn't really have a mechanism for doing it unless we wrote our, a, a brand new PDF export. Yes. Okay. That sums it up pretty well. That, that's, that's about right. So what? Um, so so uh, how many years do you think after the initial Google sort of code projects for color management do you think it was between that and having the Scribus PDF method? You know the the Scribus one. I actually can't put a uh, any time frame on that. I know that that was something that was not. It, it was so clunky initially that I I didn't know that it was really functional for a while. Right. Um, so it was one of those things that got implemented, was pretty buggy, didn't it wasn't a straightforward process. And yeah. uh, I, I think that for me it might have been something that um, Alexander uh, I don't want to mispronounce his name, I believe Prokudin, um, that he's a huge advocate for, you know, open source graphic stuff uh, and he had done a tutorial explaining that you know workflow and right. that was the first time that i really was like oh okay so it does work and this is just how you have to do it right so so it's, so, so essentially with the scribus thing if you have scribus installed there is this very convoluted and not easy to use uh, method of basically setting all the colors exporting it to scribus and using scribus's color management tools to actually produce the P PDF. Yes, and it, it is one of those things that I will also just tell you that because the entire process is so convoluted that I have abandoned uh, trying to do anything color managed within Inkscape yep. because I'd rather just deal with it in Scribus after the fact. Yeah, yeah, I, I would also confer with that, uh, concur with that because um, I have tried to use the ICC profile selectors and various other bits and bobs and it's buggy uh inconsistent yes um not easy easily discoverable and the export mechanism only appears to exist if you have scribus installed so you you already need to be following it some kind of tutorial and even if you do that uh scribus's svg support is pretty poor so there are plenty of elements that you might create in Inkscape that won't translate to Scribus at all. Yes. Oh, that's definitely the case. Yeah. And I can't remember if it's things like gradients uh, or if it's text or if it's... Uh, I, like, I know mesh grad gradients are definitely not going to work, but uh, I think there's like a whole set of things where like you cannot do any of these things, otherwise it's not, it's not going to work. There's definitely uh, some of that. And there's also some of the stuff that is really wonky with the import of SVG in Scribus where uh, if you have something that is grouped, there's some attribute with it that will basically make it not visible whatsoever. Oh dear. And uh, and the thing is that if you then just go into Inkscape and ungroup and resave it, then it'll open it just fine. So that's that's the bugs that you were talking Sometimes about. Sometimes groups process. are fine. Other times they're not. Right. So it is yeah so that, that's the there's there's definitely some quirks with it yeah I'm trying to trying to think about some of the other history that has been involved with see it sounds like the color management stuff once we got stuck on that we we kind of weren't able to overcome it easily um simply because doing it in the right way requires not only fixing all of the bugs that we have in inkscape but it also involves developing entire new export fun functionality which is a, a lot of work um, was it ever yes. considered to do more Google Summer of Codes? Um, part of the way that uh, Google Summer of Code had historically worked, I can't speak to the past few years, but for the 10 years or so that I was one of the admins for the project for it, was that we just we had a list of project ideas. People chose from those, and that was kind of how that worked. That was not something that after a certain point we felt like would be manageable for a student yeah. um, now for someone that was well versed in the internals of inkscape that would be a different story but even then it, it within that short time frame was just not something that could be done in a summer realistically yeah so so the work had basically outgrown 
the um, the scale of the Google Summer of Code projects? Yes. Yeah. Um, had had the project ever considered uh, hiring a contractor to be able to implement the fun functionality? Um, there were loose discussions uh, about that being a possibility. It was not something that was seriously explored until that the project really had seriously explored until the past few years where, you know, we've thankfully had success with some paid development and, um, yeah. and, and people, and, and part of it too. And this is just, as you had mentioned earlier about, you know, people had taken it so far and then, you know, you still have that final stretch with so much in volunteer development, the way that it goes is people have an itch and a second yeah. that that is done itching, they've scratched it enough, then it's good enough and they don't take it, you know, all the way that they could. And yeah. It's an understandable thing that people don't invest more than they need to. Yeah. Do you, do you remember Mental Guy? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. You, so he, he had a great phrase. He did a talk, I believe, um, called the uh, Toxic Workaround where he basically explained how if you have a way of hacking through the solution yourself as a programmer, you are then now not inclined at all to actually fix it in the proper way. Yes. Yeah. He, he, oh, it yeah. Was a I, pretty I, wise state statement, I think. It is. And I think that that's also the, you know, entire concept of like jerry rigging things. Yep. We, we do what we have to to get by. And, you know, if it's fast and inexpensive as it were to just get it done then that's a lot of times seen as optimal um yeah so i, I experienced this myself where I, I was trying to come to terms with the fact that the um the tasks that uh, me as a developer wanted to do the things that i was attracted to do to solve uh, were not really the things that users needed uh, or demanded and so mm -hmm. I, I i had a had a, a brainstorm about like how to uh, fix that fundamental problem of paying attention to what users are actually asking for and um, the, the only real solution that I could come up with was to essentially ask users to fund me directly because then at least yeah. they have a relationship with me and they can they can tell me what it is that they want you know do they want multi pages do they want the shape builder do they want in this case CMYK support and even if it takes me t a long time to do um, at, l at least I have the opportunity to pay attention to it um, because the alternative is that as a, an individual pro programmer in the, with the goodwill in the world, I I'm just not going to see what it is that they want. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Yeah, I, it, it's, it's, I, I, I would like to report that it's going well, um, but it's just not scaling as fast. So it, it, like if I had 100 years yeah. to grow it, I think, I think we would get to blender scales. Uh, but at the present time, we're we're, we're growing, um, you know, inch by inch by inch, and it's it's getting there. So I'm hoping that the color management stuff will really sort of light a fire under it and and be able to like grow it in a way that um, we can have more than just me, and more than just uh, so the, the bug fixing stuff that we do. Uh, maybe we can have like more fun functionality that can actually be worked on, because um, I know that there are plenty of uh, not just Google Summer of Code projects but like other parts of Inkscape where people have worked on it they've gotten it to a certain point but it lacks that polish um and that sort of yeah. like completion yeah I, I think that a uh an interesting example of that was a number of years ago where there was a fork of Inkscape Ponyscape oh yeah are you familiar with that yeah okay yeah. so that that whole thing and you know we got a lot of features from that merged back in I, I, I did that, the merge. I did the I did the back port. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, and and then we had Liam working with the project for a while because he was the yep. main person working on that stuff. And um, I had even seen him pop up in the bug tracker a couple of weeks ago, and that that got me really excited because I'm like, oh my gosh, it's been so long since I've seen him active. So, yeah, um, the, the the project has had what like 450 contributors over its 20. 21 years oh yeah yeah, yeah. It's, it's a it's a it's an amazing amount of uh diversity of human beings that have worked on it and of course that they're not all active at one time but um you know it's it's nice to think that we have had a, con a continuity of 
people like yourself who have been here this entire time um, to remember the the stories about what what happened, why why things are the way they they that they are. Yeah, and I mean, as I had said before, anything I can do to help you know share some of this history, I'm more than happy to. Absolutely. Um, thank you very much for um, sitting with me and um, going through some of the history of CMYK. Um, are you yeah. ex- are you excited about the future? I am. I I, I have been since. I joined on all the project. Uh, there's been a lot of changes, um, and I'm going to speak to things that are not going to be tangible to our users for quite a while because we have not released 1.4 yet, and the amount of stuff that has gone into a future release is mind-boggling. That yeah. it's it's not in a usable state, but. Uh, there's a lot of promise for the work that's going on. Uh, but even for 1.4, I think that there's a lot of great stuff on the horizon. But seeing the energy of the developers and, uh, you know, our community has been really great. And I think that everyone's pretty excited about the trajectory that we're on currently. Yeah, I, I, I definitely least, feel that's that. That's what I can say as an observer and just a participant in this is that we, there's some really good energy at the moment. Excellent. So um, thank you very much. And we'll see more, more of you soon. Sounds good.